guy. Aussie buns are bloody go. Today we are working on a really cool, cool tree. This is a banksia. Don't ask me what type of banksia because I've got no idea. Uh, for anyone that does have an idea, well, I'll show you the leaves because that might give you an idea if you're an aficionado of banksia, but there is millions of varieties, well, hundreds probably. <coughs> and there you go. It was running a bit low on fertiliser, it was a bit yellow, so here's an old branch that's yellow and one that's green. Growing super vigorous, but was getting a bit yellow in the foliage. Okay, so getting a bit more green now. They're greening up, so struggling for something, so I bought some um, native fertilizer for it, for Laurie's tree. This is Laurie's tree, by the way. He got this tree almost exactly a year ago. So I bought some Osmocote native for him. So that, um, you know, hopefully this tree will be super happy. So I put some in the top. And we'll see how it goes. I was fertilizing with Thrive on purpose. And you know, probably not a not a great idea to fertilize that well, let's just say Australian natives in general don't care whether you give them thrive uh, all purpose. They don't really care about the phosphorus, but with the banks here, they can be quite sensitive to phosphorus. So most things don't really care, maybe the grevillea and the banks here do. That's why I've got the native stuff just for this one. But my Malalukas and red gum and bottle brush get the same fertilizer as every other tree. The only one that doesn't is gonna be this Banksia. Um, and the other little Banksia that I got, which I might actually bring into this video and give it a bit of a trim as well. I bought a little baby Banksia tube stock and I think it's a year old. And it needs a bit of a trim before it gets some big knobbly bits that I can't get rid of. Right, so let's talk a little bit about the banks here. Um, I don't know much about banks here to be honest. So I don't know if I can really talk about it. There you go. Basically all I know, it's a broadleaf evergreen Australian native. Comes in all different types. Super fast growing. Trunks fatten up quite quick take extremely well from cuttings um, especially in autumn or early autumn if you do cuttings for a banksia they are they give you an extremely high percentage of uh, take so I might actually try some just for a bit of fun after I trim this tree I might actually try some and just put a bit of hormone on them I know it's spring not the best time of year to do a Cutting, but who knows? It might work, it might work fine. I mean, spring's not too bad. Autumn, early autumn is probably better once the heat's gone. Um, seems to work pretty well for cutting. So, there you go. That's about all I know about them. They don't like normal fertilizer, they need a native Australian native fertilizer, and they're one of the only ones really that I think care about needing an Australian native low phosphorus. Other, other people claim that all Australian natives are low phosphorus, but I think that's pretty well just an old wives tale load of baloney. There's all of mine out there growing really well and I'm giving them full strength everything. Right, so what are we doing to this tree today? Well, Laurie's tree has already been pretty well styled in a good direction of where it needs to go. Um, he got styled by the person before him, plus Laurie also did a fairly big cutback on his channel. Actually, if you want to see him trim this one back pretty substantially, go and have a look on Plant to Banter and have a look at his Banksia video. And you'll see where it came from, what he did, and where it is now. 
and it's definitely definitely in need of a cut back again. They do throw two or three or four shoots from, well, not two or three, they throw three or four or five shoots from one little spot, and they do knuckle up pretty badly. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna opt to keep, I guess, more interesting branches with shorter internodes. I will show you, actually, one thing. The internode lengths can get huge. Like I said, these are very, very fast growing. An internode length can get ridiculously huge, almost more so than a bloody jack maple. They actually get huge. So here's one that's just ridiculous. So I cut that right back at the base where it starts from. Literally out of the base of the branch where that one started from, that is its very first internode. Look at that. Actually, there's actually a dominant one back here. So, I'll try and show you. So that literally grew from the base that far before its first lot of leaves. But, actually, if you do have a look, there's a couple of fine little knobs there. I'll bring it in closer, actually. And that will allow me to show you better on here too because the light will be shining on it so here we go so there is actually a couple of dormant buds so if you wanted to and you had no other choice you could probably cut it back to there and they would shoot but in this case there's other branches there that we can use so yeah basically we're just chopping off any bits that are gonna cause it to get knobbly I'm gonna choose for some stuff to start growing up rather than out Limited a little bit to the long internode length of some of these branches. So it might just be a case of choosing the ones with a smaller internode length. So this one's got a basal bud there. I might just leave it at that. Oh, no, I'll chop that off and maybe get rid of the leaves underneath. Just so it looks a bit better. So I'll get rid of some of the leaves in the crutch of the branches. Crutch or crotch or whatever you want to say. Don't know what the difference is, but there you go. Now, that's that branch done. I just want to clean this one here up. This one here has got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, bloody damn near eight branches from one spot. So we're just gonna chop those two back. Take this inside one that's growing back in completely off. As you can see, very, very vigorous and they're just super quick. Yeah, I'm afraid I might have to chop. Jeez, I might have to chop all this growth off because the internode length is that long. It's too long. You're better off chopping it back completely and waiting for some better internode length next time rather than trying to keep it. You try and keep something that long, it just doesn't look good. Might keep that one behind as soon as I cut everything else off him. Right, so there you go, that's opened up that bit. But a super cool tree. Now, here's one that's actually pretty good. I hope you can see that. Here, you've actually got only a short little stub to the first lot of leaves. And here. And then there's another second internode length just to there, which is actually shorter than the first. So, same here. Very short from where it got cut last time here. Very short internode to there. And a nice lot of leaves on the end. So, it's not all like that. It's just in some of the super vigorous areas. That's what happens, you know. 
So here I'm just gonna thinking, thinking, thinking. Chop that short. Chop this one completely off because it's got a stupidly long one here. And cut this back one off here. It's gonna look a little bit bare, but I think I have to. I think I have to cut them back that far because the internode length is huge in some areas. So here's a shorter one, we can keep that one. So that one we've got to keep a bit of length on there. Super long one here, I'm gonna cut it back. Possibly to there will be fine. I might even cut the inside one off here and let the outside one grow that way and then there's another one back here that will be coming into this direction. A couple here that I'm cutting back to some dormant buds that you can't see but I can definitely see them. Maybe get rid of some of these big leaves. I might not cut them all off. I might just fold the leaf in half and cut like that. Just chop the leaf, make it look a little bit better because it's got some crazy long leaves on it. So maybe partially cut some off and some of the other big leaves will just Trim them back a little bit. Okay, so come around to this side here. And there's not, not a heck of a lot going on right here. So here's a yellow bit that just sort of sat there. Dead branch back here. It's like it got snapped or something at some stage. Just doesn't seem to have the same flow going into it. Or maybe I had that one in the dark a little bit. His bench is pretty well out in the open. Laurie's bench that I made for him. Pretty well out in the open, but there might have been a bit of a dark spot there. Possible. Yeah, so it looks like combating long internode lengths is going to be a thing. On the banks here. Trying not to get too long at internodes. Whether you control that by fertilizer or earlier trimming, maybe I've got to be on top of the trimming more. I don't know, I don't know. But I'll work it out, slowly work it out. That's the fun of bonsai, just trying to work these things out. Maybe it needs less fertilizer than what I gave it, gave it heaps. And it did have some yellow branches too, uh, yellow leaves too, so I don't know. Anyway, super healthy, putting out crap long internodes on it. And maybe another thing too, maybe it's just because it's a young, youngish plant. Maybe as it gets older and gets more branch division, ramification over it all, it'll, um, It'll settle down and stop growing so damn fast. Maybe I just look after it too much. Maybe, 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 maybe. A lot of maybes going on here, semi boy. Right, so we are about halfway around. Keep going here. Shorten this top one up here. So if you if you look at this, the size size difference, size difference of the leaf can be quite massive. Huge difference. Top, you can cut back harder than the bottom because the top is generally where all the energy is going to want to grow anyway. And actually looking at the top here where energy seems to be better divided between a lot more branching, 
the internode length has settled down up here, so I think it'll be fine. I think we just gotta we gotta get enough branching down low that it starts to settle down, I think. I think that'll be the key. There's some crazy growth down there. It's good to see though, it's good to see this crazy growth down the bottom of the tree. It means that the tree is super healthy. Coming around here, come back that one, come back that one. Get rid of these crazy long ones here. Off to keep two short ones, baby short ones. Chop that one back. Shorten these guys. Cut the inside growth off on this one. Encourage it to grow out. Inside growth here. I might opt, I don't know if you can see that in here. I might actually opt to keep this nice one here that's growing out here, because it might actually it's not coming from the exact spot the other two are. It's coming from a separate spot and it might actually help to grow into here and fill this in here. We do have a good back branch here. Question is, do we want something to fill in there? I think we do. I guess two questions. Would we rather this one here come out and fill in here or this one here? Come up here and fill in. I might even opt. I might opt for the inside one just to create a bit more fullness in that pad, I think. Chop the lower one down here. So I haven't heard from Laurie for a while of his plans, but in the meantime, he's given me free reign of chopping back his trees however I like. I don't know if you guys saw the video where the rats, or the Insta, it might have been an Instagram post, the rats ate his tree, so I hope he's not too mad at me for that. But I caught the rat, I caught that stinky little rat. So just, just chopping off some little ones that are trying to cross into other branches over in a different area. You don't want them all growing into the same area where you want them growing into separate areas to create some fullness in it all, in all the tree. And if there's options, I'll probably take ones off growing down and rather keep ones growing up so that we can create some upward growth and some fullness to this banks here. Pretty cool tree, I really like it. It's got really nice shape to it. Whoever did the early design on this thing did a great job. Really, really cool job. And it's starting to look a bit older, you know. I know they're a fast growing plant, but this one really is looking older quick, you know. Shorten that guy. Even that little tip, I've cut it anyway, just to hopefully stimulate some more growth back there. So yeah, the big leaves on the inside of the crutches, I'm getting rid of them because they just make it look more juvenile. If you can get rid of those leaves, big leaves like these on the insides of all the crutches, it can make it look 
less juvenile and more mature. Chop the tips out. Might even cut that one back to a dormant bud that never shot. Get rid of some of these other leaves that are just too big. The really big ones that we want to keep, I'll trim the leaf like that. Some of the big ones on the inside of the crutches, well, we're gonna completely get rid of them. just to make the tree look a bit older. And I think it makes it look older because you can see more of the branching. If you can't see the branching because it's got young leaves all over it, it just makes it look younger. If you can see all the branching without the leaves on it and the structure of a tree, it makes it look older. And I guess the aim of what we're trying to really do in bonsai is to make something look old. Even if it's not old, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an old tree. It just has to start to look old. And this tree is really starting to look quite cool. Super happy with how his banksy is coming along. And I hope Laurie will be happy with it when he finally gets reunited with it one day. He said it could be one year, could be five years, could be who knows. He's been over there with his wife Aaliyah in Canada now for nearly a year, almost a year, not quite. And they plan on staying for a fair bit longer, I think. Okay. So yeah, I waffled on again. I mean, I can either waffle on like this or I can fast forward and just do it on hyperlapse. I figure what I'll do is I'll just waffle on and if you get a bit bored, just fast forward five minutes and see what I'm up to. Probably wouldn't have progressed much in five minutes. Probably would have still been waffling on about the same thing and not done any work. Well, then just skip another five or ten. The old banks here. Bonsai. Oh, actually, I'm not finished. I was just about to say, there you go, I'm finished. I was going to bring in my little guy. Show you what a show you what a crappy little guy looks like compared to Larry's beautiful bonsai here. He's got it in a beautiful pot, beautifully mossed up. He actually took better care of it than me because when he gave it to me, it was all bright, bright green. And since it was in my care, it went a bit yellow, but it is coming back now, which is great because I was starting to sweat there, especially after I had one of his trees eaten by a rat. <laughs> All right, I'll go and get my little guy. And I'll show you that one. In the meantime, there you go, Laurie's is trimmed up. Um, exact front well. There, and chop this branch completely off. Or more like that. Way more interesting. I might have to do a big chop. Hang on, I'll be back. Yeah, what is it? Good day, guys. Welcome back. We've got my tree here. Got a couple of decisions to make on Laurie. <coughs> Laurie's tree, but not going to be too bad decisions. I was going to go a little bit harder on this side of the tree, possibly even take it off and create maybe a better tree in the future without that big branch there, which is almost as fat as the apex. 
but I think I might be able to keep it and then try to fatten up this apex a little bit more. So get back to that one. But this one here, let's see what we got here. Um, let's get rid of some stuff that we don't want. So this one there, there's a big fat one growing up here, which I think I used to try and fatten the trunk a bit. So I actually had a look, this is over two years from a tube stock, not one year, just over two years, but it's still pretty bloody quick really. I'm growing really quick. I'm leaving this guy on the ground, so you can see this guy on the ground down here. He's going to be a sacrifice brush to try and fatten up the base, and I'm just going to let him grow as long as he wants to try and create a nice big fat base. So that one's staying on. This one here had some hardship that can come off. I suppose we should try and pick a front. So, can't really see any. A couple of nice roots come out this side here. It's actually got inverse taper a little bit. There's some roots coming out this side too. Um, I don't know if you can see them, but there's a little white one here. And a couple of roots around the back here. Or the front. I mean, that could be the front. It's got better roots on this side. Uh, trunk, well, okay, but the roots there, they sort of, I don't know, it's like it got over, oh, it's like it got root bound in its little pot. So they sort of just cross around and go everywhere. So here's another one circling the trunk here. Hmm. There's two straight on the trunk. That way it sort of goes away and it might come back towards you. Yeah, I don't like that. That looks ugly, those roots. If that's the case, then that sort of eliminates that as the front. We don't want it that way because it's too straight. We don't want it that way because it looks weird and this big knobby thing's coming at you. So you can see two years, this thing's getting quite fat already just in a pot, so looks like Banksy is actually quite a good one to do in a pot if you want a fast growing plant. It's in a big pot, but by no means has it filled this up with roots, so I'm going to leave it in here for another two years and just see how, see how big it gets. And talking about how big it gets, that means I don't want to be cutting back major big branches right now that are going to help fatten up the trunk. So possibly I don't want to be, well, I don't want to be taking off this one here that's going to fatten the base. I don't want to take off the apex, wherever the apex is going to be. I want to leave at least just one of those probably. Not quite sure which. If this was all the case, I don't really want one to grow really big and strong on the inside of what is quite a nice curve here. If I leave this one on the inside grow big and strong, what's going to happen is it's going to fatten up here and then actually straighten that back up with swelling and actually get rid of some of that shape. So let's get rid of that one. That one can go. I haven't cut it right back neat and tidy. I've just left a couple little stubs. I might even just leave them as stubs, let them just die back and just a little stub to tell a story. Um, down here, leave that one. This one here, I'm tempted to leave this one and let it grow super long. The reason why is this little guy here could become a really nice, actually in a pretty good spot to become a side branch out here and then sort of going up. So he can sort of go up there and become a side branch, I guess. This one here can go on the inside here. These two little guys under here, I think can go. I'll just check 
whether we've got a back one at all because it needs some depth to the tree and this one here could create some depth if there's nothing else. So if we do keep that one for depth, I guess it breaks some rules because it's going to be lower than the first main branch here. So that's alright, I don't mind that. I'm not going to wire this one now, or this one. I mean I could, but as you can see this stuff's quite flexible, so even in a year, I can wire this again in a year. So I think for now I'm just going to cut it to back to the branch that I want to keep. And then in a year I can wire it. See these branches here, just make sure it's not going to be one that I'm keeping. If you look at this, you can go like that and tie it in a knot. Ooh, not quite, it did break. <laughs> but super, super flexible. Really flexible. So, Going by how flexible that is, I'm going to leave these two grow. Take out that one. Take out another one in here. Check that I'm recording because I'm a bit paranoid lately. Yep. Find my other pair of snips. Okay, so if that's the case, won't need this little guy in here. I love this one here. This is a great back one as well. This one here can become a back one. At the very least, this one here will help fatten up this side and create the bulge out further if I decide I don't like it later. But for now, I want to create that as a back one for a bit of depth. I could also... So I want to keep that one. I like that one. I could also keep one here to go back and around like that for depth. So that could become my depth branch off the first branch. So I will keep that one as well as a bit of a backup. And I'll also keep an upright one here, I think. Like I said, I'm not going to wire these now, but I will wire them before they get too thick. Because I don't want them in the exact spots that they are in. So that one can go out like that. That one can go sort of out like that. That one can be a back one. This one can disappear. Okay, that can become a, a depth branch. Get rid of this little guy here. Don't know if I quite got him. That can become the branch, that can become a depth branch there. Or here. Or I can use that one. I quite like this little guy. I'm gonna get rid of that big one altogether. You're gone, you're gone, mate. And just use these two for that branch. So I'm gonna let that grow now. I'm gonna... Probably leave that guy on for now. I feel like I want to keep this one here because that'll make it so that it goes sort of that way, that way, that way, and then it'll go back that way. Ideally, I would have liked to have planted this on a bit of an angle when I first planted it, but I can certainly repot it on an angle next time because the trunk comes straight up for the first few inches. But we can change that with a repot. So, if that's the case, let's get rid of some of this. And actually, what I might do, guys, is actually keep that bit. Alright, guys, well, I was looking for my saw and I can't find it, so. I don't know what I did with it. I don't know. So, what I was going to do is cut this nicely with a saw. Get rid of that big back one. 
I was going to cut it nicely with a saw so that I could make some cuttings. Some banks here cuttings. But I can anyway. I'll just do it like that. Put in some rooting hormone and there's a cutting. So with that guy, put him in. Strip it back. I'm going to have another banks here cutting. So there's two cuttings. That'll probably do me. I'm not fussy with the banks here yet. I don't need heaps. But mind you, they are growing really well. So maybe they will become a plant that I'll use more of in the future. Native banks here. They're the only two that really had some nice good hardwood. Actually one a lorry so I'm going to cut off in a minute I might use. Just going to clean this section up a little bit to help with the taper. You can see how soft the inside of this is. It's literally, you can see the two years growth. One year is that whole middle bit. The second year is that fat outside there. <laughs> Pretty quick growing. Alright, so if that's going to be like that, this will become a side branch here. That one will go over that way. Two branches here, a back of branch there, depth branch, another back branch here, side branch up here, maybe a front branch here, and at the very least, well, That one's going to come there. No, I don't think we need it for now. Because this tree is going to get bigger and bigger. And I don't think we need that little guy in there. Right. So, sacrifice branch, side branch, depth branch, second side branch, leader or trunk, another side branch here. Depth branch at the back. And that's it. So we're down to one, two, three, four, five branches, a trunk, and a sacrifice branch. And that's it. So there you go. So only two years from some fairly ordinary, just a tube stock. And it doesn't take long, does it? You can repot it on a bit of a different angle, create some more interest. Bend some stuff out and around the place, you know, and we're well on our way with that one. So that's definitely, I can tell you what that is, Banksia marginata, because there's the tag, and that one will be seriously fertilised to their absolute hilt, and we're going to get some good growth out of that one. Right, back to Laurie's tree, I've been thinking about it while I've been working on that one. Just got to go get some tubing. Okay guys, let's come back over to Loris. Shrink down a bit. Now, let's get into it. Um, what I'm going to plan on doing is these two branches are directly on top of each other and I don't like it. So what I want to do is be able to pull this one here out on its own and you can see yeah that's probably the front there somewhere gives it good movement in the trunk better than if I use the other side and then a lot of the trees go on that way so what was I going to say here if I pull this one here to the side you can see how that if I get my hands out of the way you can see how that really um, fills out the canopy and really improves it a lot. So I want to do that. I also want to bring a branch around here at the back. I want to bring a depth branch in at the back down here. This branch at the top can be bent more to the back like that. 
So we're gonna do a few guide wires. I'm not a big fan of wiring out whole trees just because I'm lazy. And if you can do it with a guide wire, why not? Less invasive for the tree. A guide wire does generally take longer to set, I suppose you could say. So we've got the old uh, plastic tubing. An old car that I bought years and years ago had this uh, plastic had this plastic tubing in the boot <laughs> on a rusty old roll and that's where I've been using it ever since. <laughs> now, why I dropped that? Okay, so here we go. Let's get through this tubing. down there Put some tubing up here and then we are gonna pull just trying to work out where the best spot to pull is there not there Working, is it? Mm. I was hoping they would divide easily. Actually, what I might do is I might pull that one where I want it there and then pull another one to the side there. Right, so let's put that one there, okay? Want it there somewhere. Slip, aren't you? Amateur, Sammy. You're an amateur, mate. You have no bloody idea what you're doing. I'm going to go around this top fat one up here. And then it shouldn't be able to slip off. Okay. So, looks like we've held that branch where we want it now. But now you can see this other branch is still well in its way. So, I'm hoping find another fat branch to tie that to. Sometimes you're better off just wiring it. I feel like in this case I would have been better off just putting some heavy wire on it. Um, but I don't have any. <laughs> so there you go. Alright, we'll get there though. Plenty guide wires. Guide wise are your friend. Right, where's my bit of wire here? Now, what I want to do is I want to stop, when I pull that one down here, this one wants to come with it. So what I want to do is guide wire that one. To the main apex. to stop that from being able to move. Just gotta get inventive, you know? Get inventive. Look at all your different angles and where they were pulling from and can soon work out. So let's pull that one a little bit more. And then we wanna pull this one down to there. massage it a bit. If you go a little bit far bending this banksia, it looks like it puts out a little bit of a sap as a pre-warning saying dude you know like that's my limit. So it puts out a bit of sap so just be aware of that. On the inside of the bend when you're bending it the inside starts to put out a little bit of sap. So if you keep an eye on that it should be sweet should be safe. If you start ignoring that coming out, well, 
not long after that, I feel like the outside of the barrage will just smash apart, it'll explode, and you'll be done. So keep an eye on the sap on the inside if you're really bending an old branch quite hard. But in general, like these seem like rubber bands. Seem like absolute rubber bands compared to a lot of the trees that we seem to work on around here. A lot of the Malalukas. Banksia is a rubber band. Okay, so there you go. There we got there in the end, see? Got that divided. Got one there. Could maybe even put a little bit more there. Just wondering where the wire on that one would work. Like I said, I don't have much in the way of wire, so I've got a, bit of, got a little bit of copper wire here I found, which should be enough for that little branch. So we'll just wire that little branch around. Ultimately, if you do wire out a whole tree, it does give you better better options to move everything exactly where you want it. Clip and grow is fun and it's fine and whatever, whatever, more natural. But at the end of the day, if you do wire out a tree, it definitely does give you more control. Okay, guys, I failed you once again. Bloody camera got too hot and shut down, so I had to put it in the freezer. Just came out the freezer, so hopefully I can last a few more minutes. So basically, what what's happened here, which you might have seen some of it, is I've just done a heap of guide wires around the place. I did actually put some proper wire on on a couple of branches that I wanted to direct in different d directions, and it was just easier to use bit of wire on these branches just to move them exactly where I wanted them away from sort of like this branch underneath and this one at the back this one at the top I moved this way more I just got to remember now and this one here I used as a bit of a drop branch here down here and I think it's looking pretty good I'll give it a bit of a spin see if you can pick what branch I'm about to cut off a reasonable big one See how you go. Okay. I'll give it another spin and just think which which branch am I gonna cut off? By the way, this tree is actually looking really good. Really happy with its progress today. It's doing super well. And that's its front there somewhere. And you can see our guide wired one down the back here so that you can see this branch underneath and that's going to create a bit of depth. I'll put as much pressure as I wish on it because I'll show you, I'll try and show you. It'd be good if I can show you guys. Camera is still cold. Okay, so here you can see I've moved a branch. I just want to show you what happens, which shows you the full stress of the branch. Here, on the inside here of where I'm bending it, because I'm pulling it down that way towards the camera, on the inside it just starts to split open like that. If you go much further you'll get a bit of sap come out, and not long after that the outside out here will explode. So just keep that in mind. You can let it split a little bit, certainly on this one anyway. And yeah, it's like a rubber band. It's not too bad. Anyway, have you guys had time to think about which branch is coming off? 
It's looking really good. Actually really happy with its progress today. I went a little bit above and beyond and did some extra little bits to it. Okay. Well, it's actually going to be two. I lied. <laughs> okay, which two might you think might come off? Well, I'll save you the, the stress, which means I'll have four little new Banksias. Alright, this one here. Don't know if you guys picked that one. Gone. Turn that one into a cutting. Chop the leaves off. Chop the new shoots off, leave a couple of old leaves. There's another cutting. Pretty cool. Thank you, Laurie, for your cutting. <laughs> and thank you, Tree, for donating it. Now, one more. Give it a spin. This one wasn't in the plan. I want to cut that one off. It's just hanging out too far. All right, but that's not the one. So, all right. Really, I'm just harvesting cuttings off Laurie's tree. I want to harvest as many cuttings as I possibly can. And at least this way, if he watches the video, he thinks that I just changed my mind quickly. Really, I just want to find spots for cuttings. <laughs> anyway, so I gave you another spin. One more branch is coming off and then we're done. Ready, set it. Done. Where'd you go? Where'd my cutting go? There you are. So there's going to be another cutting. There we go. One, two, three, four, five cuttings. Two marginatas and I'm not sure what these narrow ones are. Someone might know. Look at that. I'm actually really happy with its progress today. Super happy. I actually think that's looking really, really cool. Another spin. Just everywhere has got a branch now. It's got a good flow about it. We did have one big space in here, but I put that drop branch in. Because I knew that I was cutting that one off, so I'll put the drop branch in to try and cover in some space there. We've got this little guy here, which I'm going to actually let grow up and get bigger and let him grow out here to make a fuller bottom pad, which will stop some of that space a bit, but a little bit of space okay, just not too much. There you go. Pretty happy with that branch there gone. Looks pretty good. I might just... You know, I know Banksia wood doesn't hold on very well, if at all. That doesn't matter. I just leave a little stub there because, you know, tells a story of where a branch came off. And that'll sort of get all pithy and die back anyway. There you go, pretty cool. So thanks very much, guys. You saw the little guy get worked on, so you had a bonus today, you had two trees. And Laurie's really cool one. I'll try to put a link to Laurie's Banksia in the bottom. Otherwise, Laurie might comment and leave a link to his video if he's watching. But that's a, another day's progress of Laurie's Banksia. Pretty cool. It's a really, really cool tree. I love the trunk and the movement and the branch structure. A lot of guide wires you can see everywhere. It's just quicker with a guide wire. There you go. I was tempted to cut this big one off the back, but for now it just takes too much away. We'll see what happens in the future.
Cheers guys, thanks for watching. Aussie Bonsai Bloke. And I better sign out before the phone has to go back in the freezer. Cheers guys, thanks very much. Hope you got something out of this video. Pretty cool plants. And I've got myself five more cuttings. You beauty.